Welcome back everyone and I hope you're all doing well. Every year I make a video comparing the newest iPhone to my daily professional camera and every year I get the same types of comments. Things like, of course I can't tell the difference comparing these images on a YouTube video. And the truth is, those people are right. Comparing images through a video you might be watching on the size of a phone screen, or after I've compressed them and uploaded them to YouTube, or just resizing those images basically means that you have to end up taking my word for it. And when it comes to photography quality, the most important deliverable when your work is completed is actually in print. It's not on a phone screen. So this year I've made the comparison even better by having my images professionally printed on metal. And the best part is you're not even going to have to take my word for it because we're going to go around asking random strangers as they're walking by which image they think was taken with which camera. And the results are going to surprise you. You guys want to help me with a YouTube video about photography? Uh, you're just going to stand here on the red brick first and then you're just going to look at this photo. Yep, that's good. And you can tell me which one you think was taken with my phone and which one was taken. The other one is my professional Canon camera. Um, they look so similar. That's um, the idea. This year's tests were a bit more difficult than last year for people to get correct. I picked the daytime photo from Gross Mort and I picked the blue hour shot from the coast of Newfoundland. Unlike last year though, the blue hour shot had far more detail in the shadow areas than the images that I took from Colorado the year prior. I think the bottom one is camera on top one. I was oh, huh. They look Maybe almost the like the lighting. Road. No, they do look at it. Only because the bottom is a little bit more vibrant and like I feel like there's more crevices on the bottom. I guess you're right. So I was going to say bottom was iPhone. So you, you yeah, say... I'm go different from here. I'm going to say bottom is, bottom is iPhone and top is... Yeah, top is iPhone. I had every person that walked by make a guess from a normal viewing distance and then I allowed them to get as close as they'd like and give me a second answer. Do you guys want to join in? Yeah, sure. All right, so, so which one is on the phone, right? Yeah, so just make sure you stay on the red, and then just guess which one is the phone and which one is the camera. Ooh, low key. I see a little more color. I see a little more color on this one. Looks a little more vibrant. I still can't tell. And now, if you want to get closer and look at more details and change your answer if you want to, you can. You don't have to. The only thing I can really notice is like the slight differences in color. It's the sky. It's so you're just looking line. at differences in color? <laughs> or maybe I'm like delusional. Maybe they're just, no, 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 no. Maybe they're the same photo. <laughs> they, th I would never do that, but. I'm still gonna okay. say the top. I'm still gonna say the bottom. Okay. Okay, I mean, okay, this is the phone and this is the camera. Why did you change your answer? Out of I curiosity. Think the clarity mm -hmm. is actually blurrier here than over here. Okay. And also, like, the coloring is different. Mm -hmm. So this one is, like, more precise coloring, while this one just brings out all the oranges. Gotcha. And stuff like that. Okay. For the daytime shot from Gross Mort, I received roughly 50 guesses with 57% of the people getting it correct at a distance. This increased to 68% after being allowed to inspect closer. When I asked people what their reasonings were, many of them said sharpness in detail at a distance. But then a few even questioned themselves as they got closer. I'm just, I don't know what this one looks at the more trees. high quality. Look at the trees though. Like uh, it's like, look, it's more crisp there. there. I don't know. Now I'm thinking that one. Why? Because it's like the back, far away is a bit more like, I see. This surprised me considering I actually think that these two images are very close to my eyes, especially from a reasonable viewing distance. The results getting slightly more accurate as people got closer is what I would expect, but the next shot is where things get interesting. All right, and then for this one, which one do you think was taken with the phone, left or right? Yeah, the left one was so you, taken with the phone. You think left is phone? Mm -hmm. I also think left is phone. Okay, you both said left originally. I'm gonna go with left again. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go with left again. That one looks a little okay. lighter. I think the right is the phone. Going right. Okay. Oh, I think it's wrong, you know. The blue hour shot from the coast, to me, is the image that is more obvious to discern which one is which. Shot at an ISO of 800 with lots of shadows in the image, this is typically where iPhones struggle the most. So you both think top is a phone and left is a camera, no matter, or left is the phone, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is kind of phone vibes. Look at the colors. Yeah, phone. Okay, phone, final answer. The results, though, are surprising. 40% of people got this image correct from a distance, which increases to 46% once getting a bit closer. This is the phone, and this is the phone. Okay. Yo, yeah. we did it. Thank you for taking your time. Thank you. All right. This one is the phone. Oh, this one is the phone. All I right. think everyone got this one right. Let's go. Yeah. Yes, you heard that correctly. Even after being able to inspect this image as close as those people wanted, less than half the people I asked got this right. 
Keep in mind these images are also the larger print of the two, meaning they have to stretch out more detail, even more than the daytime image. So why did this happen? One thing that I noticed in these prints is that the iPhone image after editing is just a touch more saturated. I edit all of these images myself and matching completely different camera sensors to each other can be difficult and is nearly impossible to get exactly right, which in turn results in slight variations of the images. Throughout the years of doing this, I've learned that people tend to prefer brighter, slightly more saturated images in general, and especially when they are compared next to each other. This means that a bit of my editing likely plays a pretty large role in people's decisions when trying to figure out which one they think is an iPhone and which one isn't. Print quality can also make a difference, and this year I got the best of the best. The last few years I've had paper prints, and this year I reached out to my friends at New Mexico Fine Art Printers to see if they'd be a part of this video, and they happily agreed. I recently had a gallery show of over 15 large metal prints all done through NMFA and as someone who has printed through numerous print houses over the years, the quality, mounting hardware, customer service, and best of all, the price is really unmatched. I had all of these images printed on white metal using Chromalux aluminum and you don't really need to know what any of that means, just know that it's one of the best print options you can choose. So when I say that these prints couldn't get any better, I mean it. This means that every detail makes it to print and absolutely won't hide flaws in the images. And as I said before, my editing process is to edit the Canon R5 image first and try to match it as best as possible to the iPhone image. I talk about this more in depth on my comparison video. If you missed that, it's right here. And also keep in mind that these are all Apple Pro Raw images that I fully edited. I think every college student passing by here would instantly pick out which image was which or which one was taken by the phone if I had tried to print straight out of camera images, as nearly everyone can pick out that phone look in any image that's not a RAW. Before sending these off to the printers, I take both images into On One AI resize and upscale them to poster sizes. I recommend doing this for any image you're planning to print, regardless of what camera it was taken on, and I will have that link down below the like button if you're interested. This will always provide better results than just letting a print studio upsize your images for you, and it's something that I've done throughout the years no matter what camera I've shot on. So why was it so close this year? The honest truth is, these images are really hard to tell apart. A few people even asked if I was pranking them by having the exact same image next to each other, and I had to tell them I wasn't. Of course, a phone camera is never going to fully replace a full-fledged professional camera for work, but given the right circumstances and editing knowledge, if someone bought an image like this, I can confidently say that they'd never know the difference, and to me, that is scarily impressive. The best part is, you don't even have to take my word for it because I think the stats speak for themselves. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you really enjoyed it, check out some of my other content about landscape photography and in-the-field tips. As always, there's got to be a rainbow out there somewhere. We just got to go find them. Later. Yeah. Easy to one people wouldn't tell that's the whole point. Ways. That's cool. Yeah, that's the whole idea. That's, cool. that's so hard. They look the same. Uh, that's the yeah. idea, yes.